the Speed Bug channel. Just today's a quick vlog in the car, something a little bit different on the way out here from work. Today's main topic is obviously the new hot topic that Chevy announced yesterday, the new Corvette ZR1. Now, I thought it would be most appropriate to do this vlog and anything like that, you know, within my Corvette. What better way to talk about a Corvette then within a Corvette. Safety first, people. So, let's kick some things off here. Get some better light first. Alright, now that we're back in some light, but it's semi-dark in here because of all the tint, but anyway, who cares? It's no big deal. Anyway, so, back on the topic of the new ZR1. However, the first thing I know we all have to say, the thing just looks badass. It looks awesome. There's no denying that it is just probably the sickest and coolest looking Corvette still to date. Um, it's got the looks, it's got the aero, it's got the power, I mean it's the complete package and some say it's the last of the front engine Corvettes that's going to be released. What the hell is going on with these Florida drivers? Running forward, Chevy hasn't announced the price yet, they've only released a few, you know, performance specs and uh, 755 horsepower and 700 some foot-pounds of torque that's nothing to sneeze at. The shaker hood, you know, the upgraded, I don't know if it's an upgraded LT4, if it's a whole new platform, you know, it should be dual overhead cam, you know, just like the original King of the Hill Corvette, but bottom line, it's still a badass event. Pricing is what's going to make or break this car, in my personal opinion. Based off of what you can get a base Stingray for, a fully loaded Stingray like a 3LT with the Z51, a Z06, you know, with the 3LZ package, and then the, obviously the king of the hill, the ZR1. And now, since the Z06 has been out for quite some time, you know, even when they retail for a hundred, you can get them, you know, in the 80s, you know, if you find the right dealer, even in the 70s. Down here in Florida, where Corvettes are more common and you can drive them all year round, you know, prices are going to vary, you know, as they would up in the north with the winter states. Not everybody's going to try and buy a vet in the middle of December unless it's a Christmas present. But still, then again, you're not going to really do much with it but plow snow. So let, let's be real. The bottom line is then you have the horsepower ratings. You have the you can always pro charge your Stingray and you can buy a brand new Stingray I've seen here in Florida, even though it's a one LT for 49 grand. Now 49 grand, that's a lot of car, and that's a hell of a car, and to be brand new. To get it pro charged for 49 grand, you can make 700 horse no problem with a good pro charger or an AA &A kit or a Paxton or any of the kits that are out there. I mean, hell, even some Whipple and some you know some roots blowers out there, you can make six, seven hundred horsepower through a sticker on automatic and do a 10 second quarter on street tires. Then you get to the Z06 package. The Z06, if let's say if you get it at 75, if it's used, you can find them even in 60s if they're used with 15, 20,000 miles uh, with or without the carbon ceramic brakes, you know, and if you're driving your car on the street, you really don't need carbon ceramic brakes, and you're really not going to need them once you have to foot the bill after you figure out how damn expensive they really are. So let's say you get them without the carbon ceramic brakes, the car itself makes 650 horse, 650 torque, whether it's a sticker or an auto, you can't go wrong. Car's a low, you know, 11 second, high 10 second car. Um, and it corners like it's on rails. It'll pull well over G in any category. So at 75 grand, you know, let's call let's call it 80. Even if you get a 1LZ, the car's brand new. Then you have to jump up to let's say I, which I think, my personal opinion, I don't think that the ZL1, uh, excuse me, the ZR1 is going to start at anything less than 120,000. The C6 ZR1 was about 100,000, 110,000, and fully spec'd out, it was about 120,000. So, it only makes sense, you know, eight, nine years later, and it's a whole new generation, and this car just is everything better than the C6. Why wouldn't it be a little bit more? So, I personally don't see it, so now you kind of have to ask yourself, is the ZR run really worth it? Because it only is 100 more horse than a Z06? Or is it really not worth it because you can take the 50 grand that you're going to either finance or spend on it and put it into your Z06 and 
about it and not even completely void the warranty and get that hundred horse. So whether it be an upper pulley, you know, an intake and some exhaust, you can make up a hundred horse on that blown LT4, no problem. So uh, you can look at it another way, as if you buy a Z06 for 60 grand, you know, it's like you have, or excuse me, 75, 80,000. It's like you got, you know, 40 or 50,000 dollars in the trunk of cash. So it's kind of like a really hard sell to me if that car does sell for 120, 130, even 110 because the Z06 is such a proven platform and the price gap to me is just way too big. Yes, it goes around the track faster. Yes, it's quicker. Yes, it has a higher top speed of like, what, 210 or something like that. And, and it should. But this car will primarily be driven on the street. And are you going to really want to drive that car all the time? On the street you're gonna be so sad or so mad if someone spits on it or nicks it or brushes up against it you'll be like hey man get the hell away from my car hell i know i would so you know you kind of have to ask yourself now that your car is so nice and so unique you might not even really want to take it out in public and that to me is where you draw the fine line it's got the like i said it's got the real aggressive front end the big wing it's going to cause attention and it and, and it and it should cause attention but you don't want to have it cause so much attention like when you're driving an Aventador or something like that that you can't go anywhere because everyone crowds around it and just wants to take pictures of it. So, um, and if someone bumped into my Aventador, I, I don't know what the hell I would do. So, I only have a Corvette and I already get pissed. So, that's to me my synopsis. You know, we'll see what happens when all the specs are released. You know, I really think it should do a high, uh, excuse me, a low seven or a high six around the Nurburgring. Um, anything else, you know, I, yeah, I think it's an upgrade, but I think you can only do so much with two wheel drive and, you know, the car being front engine. I really think the the mid engine Corvette or the mid engine whatever it's going to be that's going to come out that GM's going to bring out is really going to be the new supercar. Um, whether or not they continue the Corvette, the C8, just be another just front engine Corvette and then call this new mid engine. Corvette a, a new car. Maybe it's made by Chevy, maybe it's made by Cadillac, who knows. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what they do. And uh, But I just think it, it's, it's pretty interesting overall, my review on the car. It's, uh, it's so far, it's, it's, it's got the looks. It's, it's badass and I, I love the way it looks. You know, if I had the extra coin right now, uh, would I buy it? Yes and no. I'm, I'm, I'm divided. Just like I said, simply because, you know, even though my car is already supercharged and my car already makes 750 horsepower, to me it's a hard sell to even sell mine and spend another $60,000, $70,000 to get a car that makes the same amount of power, even though I'm starting there, but it just goes around to turn a little bit quicker. But not everywhere I'm going around on the street, I have to pull 1G or 1.2G, so it's like, yeah, it's pointless. I can get 20,000, 30,000 miles out of my, my current tires. You're probably not going to get 30,000 miles out of ZR1 tires on the street. Because I know Z06s barely get that. So it's a tough chill, but you know, you, uh, you as the, you know, the buyer, you'll make the decision. You'll figure it out what it is that you want to do. And uh, when GM releases all the pricing, I guess, you know, we'll really know. And uh, that'll, that'll be the determination whether the car will be a success or it'll be a flop. In my opinion, I kind of think the, the, uh, the C6 ZR1 at the time it was released, it was a complete flop. You know, you'd buy it for 100,000 and you know, two months later, you couldn't even trade it in for 75. But today, where they're 55, 60, there's nothing else that's gonna go around the track or that's gonna really accelerate for 55 or 60 grand that's gonna perform, look, and you know, do all the things that a Corvette really should do, except have good interior in a C6. We all know C6 interior has some shitty there's nothing really, you know, much that you can do about it, but, you know, the car's a performer, and and, and, and that, that's what I do. I believe that Corvette focuses for, first and foremost on performance, then on luxury. You know, it's not a McLaren, it's not a Lamborghini, it's not refined like that, but it, it can hang with as far as the performance is like that, where I think the other cars are kind of reversed the other way. So, again, we'll see what happens when it, uh, all the, the full details are released, you know, the 0 to 60s, the track times, you know, the quarter miles, you know, the braking, all that, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how much they really charge for this car. It could shock everybody, just like the Dodge Demon did, you know, for $84,000, it's kind of hard to build a 
race car that does 960s with all of that, but has a warranty. Power windows, air conditioning, power locks, you know, all of that. So we'll see. Anything's possible. That's my review. That's my synopsis. That's kind of what I think about the new Corvette ZR1. Overall, it is badass, but uh, we'll see, you know, what, uh, what, what GM has in store and, uh, you know, and what they did for testing. I've seen multiple, you know, spy shots and that thing running around on the track. So it's got to be something good. So, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below or inbox as you normally do. And uh, I'll see if I can answer it sometime and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, checking me out. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you for another episode again on the Speedbug channel. Peace.